Well, I hope you are watching this having just finished your first linear appraisal session, or maybe it's your second or your third, and you're excited, your appraiser left you with this big, huge sheet of paper with all of this information, but now what do you do? Um, so I know it's very easy to focus on those last four letters and the final score, which is what we see in everyone's marketing and Facebook posts. Um, but really, if you're not looking at the other 20-ish columns of information and data about your animals, you are going to be doing yourself a really big disservice. Um, this can tell you, uh, these scores can tell you uh, how your animals individually are doing, how your herd is doing, and more importantly, help you figure out what areas you need to focus on and help you decide who to breed your does to in the coming season and years. Um, so let's first start with the first step. So the very first thing I personally need to do with my linear appraisal data is I need to shrink it down. Um, this is very hard to read. This is a very big sheet. You know, you can try to like get a ruler and look at one line at a time. Um, but it, this makes my head swim. I can't like really deal with that much information at once. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually shrink down, quite literally shrink down my data. I'm going to make myself a spreadsheet um, with that exact same information, but I am also going to add more things to it for my own benefit. I like to add things like uh, breaking, separating out the bucks and the does. Um, I like to put in exactly how old the animal was on appraisal day. I put in the lactation number. That's all good relevant information. I also um, add comments um, if there were oral comments that the appraiser mentioned during linear appraisal that isn't necessarily in this quantified score, but something the appraiser said that could be helpful. Um, I'm going to add in um, that information too. So just however it's best for you, even if that's just writing it out on another piece of paper, um, just find a way to make this uh, data a little bit more digestible to you than these huge pink sheets. Um, this also is something nice because I can then compare year to year by maybe adding additional tabs um, to this spreadsheet. So physically smaller, yay. So now that I have my data a little smaller, um, I am going to be start by looking at each area, each um, column on my spreadsheet and start looking for consistencies and inconsistencies. Where are we uniformly strong? Where are we uniformly bad? Where are we all across the board? Um, what's nice when you actually do physically write that data again, um, like whether you did that on paper in a spreadsheet, is you start to see these things come up before you even you know look back and you start to notice start to notice trends. Um, one area where uh, we are consistently strong in our herd is in our rear legs. You can see we have B for very good, E for excellent, and pretty much every animal except for a couple of young ones. So that's an area where I can say, yeah, we're doing pretty good. And I agree, I'm pretty picky about my rear legs. I don't like posty back legs. We'll talk a little bit more about legs in a few minutes. Um, but look at this. This was a real eye-opener for me. We are in plus and good plus in every single goat in my herd um, for feet. So that was a really eye-opening moment for me because guess what? I talked to the appraiser about it and this is not because all of my goats have bad feet. This is because I have been over trimming. I have been trimming too much heel consistently on every animal. I'm very consistent about trimming my feet every four weeks. So. I have been doing a great disservice to my animals. Here's the good news. That's totally fixable and correctable. So I am so glad that I have this information going forward and can change the way that I am trimming feet. Um, so look through those columns and see where you are um, finding a lot of similarities and dissimilarities and where you're doing well and where you are needing improvement. Um, Another thing I will then look at is, are there some consistencies happening between certain dams and their offspring or between certain sires and their offspring? Uh, one thing I noticed um, as I was inputting my data was in rump width, sorry, that's rump angle, um, 
This one was a 38. This one was a 31. And this one was a 30. Those were the whitest rumps in our herd. Those three girls have the same sire. So I know now um, which sire was consistently throwing the whitest rump. Look through your data, see what you can find um, that's consistent and inconsistent in your herd. Okay. So let's actually break down what those numbers mean. The linear traits are broken down on a scale of one to 50. Now, you are not necessarily shooting for the biggest number. Um, when I first was getting involved with linear appraisal as a new herd, I was very confused. I thought, wow, why do they, why would we be shooting for an animal that looks like that? Or uh, teats that look like that? That's, that's absolutely nuts. And the reality is we're not. In most categories, we're shooting for this picture about right in the middle. We're gonna go through each individually, um, but in general, um, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a well-balanced animal. We're not actually looking to be at either of the extremes in most of the categories. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and look at each picture individually. So in dairy strength, um, the average range we're really looking for is about 27 to 33. So you can see that's between 25 and 45. And if you study that picture, you can see that um, the goat in number five um, is really narrow in the chest. Her front legs are quite close together. You can see um, on 25, they're um, wider set. There's more chest floor. And then on 45, you can see that that goat has her legs sort of all the way out and she looks like a tank. Um, you can also see differences there in the thickness of the neck, the, the, um, the head structure. Um, and overall, we're looking for a strong animal, but you know, a well-balanced animal. So in that area of strength, um, your ideal score is between 27 to 33. So going on to dairiness, um, you can see in five, I think, I always think that one looks like a sheep, <laughs> but you can see that that animal um, is built mm, almost like a square. Um, her, uh, behind her front legs, she does not come down. You don't see that depth of body. Um, yeah, her, she really does look like a square to me. Uh, you can see that um, her back uh, doesn't have her ribs kind of go straight down. Um, that's more like a meat animal, um, where if you go to 25 and 45, you can see in 25, we have um, some more elegance to the head, uh, longer, leaner neck. Um, and you can see that the ribs are more open and winging backwards. Um, and then you can see more um, depth um, into um, in the barrel. So behind her front legs, you see that body getting deeper, more body capacity. Now 45 is a little bit too much. So that goat is going downhill, you know, past her shoulders. You see she's sloping down. Um, she's got really long bones. Um, she, it doesn't look like her frame is gonna hold up um, her body. So you can see here that the ideal score is 33 to 38. So we're looking for something that has that dairy bone structure and body type, but not this 45 to me looks like downright frail. Um, I don't really, I, I wouldn't want anything that looks like that in my herd. Okay. Looking at rump angle, um, this is something we definitely are still improving in the Nigerian breed. Um, I would love to go just stare at Sonnen's all day long um, with some beautiful, with some beautiful rumps. So five, you see it actually gives you the angle there. A five is a 45 degree angle um, rump, meaning it's very steep. It has a lot of slope to it. Um, 25 is um, better. And then 45 is like, woo, beyond zero. I don't know. I don't think, I'm not sure if I've ever seen an animal like that. Um, but here we're looking for a score of about 30 to 35. Um, if you're doing 25 plus in Nigerians, that's pretty sweet. Um, rump angle is a, is a tough one. We need to keep working on in the breed. Okay. Uh, rump width. So here, if you look right next to, you know, either side of this tail head on this goat, this is the area you see getting wider with the higher point score. So here we are looking for about the points of 30 to 35. Um, 
you can really see like that on that number five, like that is a really narrow rump. And we would worry about a doe like that having having kidding issues. You can also kind of see that in this with a wider rump, she's probably more likely to have a wider arch um, uh, in her escutcheon area. So yep, rump width, we're looking for pretty wide, um, uh, 30 to 35. Let's go up here to the rear leg side view. So five is what we would call posty. You see how those legs are practically straight up and down. Um, that animal is not going to have a lot of range of motion. Um, in the 25 point, you see that there is a nice uh, curve in the leg, in the back of the leg there. And then um, it is then straight down relatively from the um, hawk to the pastern. Um, if you don't know what those words mean, it's basically her knee to her ankle. Um, now in the 45, you can see that they're so curved that in this picture, that doe is almost squatting looking. So that's not really ideal either. We're really looking for something. I like, I like that doe in 25. That's a, that's a nice leg, um, nice leg shape there. So we're looking for about 25 to 30 points in the rear leg side view. Four udder attachments. So the very front of the udder where it attaches to the belly. Um, you can see in the five point score, this is a doe that um, it has a big cleft. There's like a big cup there um, in her um, the front of her udder. Uh, we definitely don't wanna see that though. If you have a first or second freshener, don't panic just yet. They can fill that in with time. Um, not guaranteeing it, but it can happen. 25, you see that that udder is um, attached up into the belly. We don't have that um, cleft anymore. And then in 45, we see that, that there's a what you call a big extension of four udder. Like there's a very little distinction almost between where that hits into her stomach. It's very smoothly blended up there. So in the four udder attachment, we like more. More, you can never have too much four udder as long as it's balanced in the rest of the udder. We like four udder. Four udder is wonderful. Um, so in this, we're looking for a higher point range, about 35 to 42. Uh, if you're big into the goat chatter, you will hear people talk about the 40, 40, 40. 40 in udder attachment and four udder attachment, 40 in rear udder attachment and um, <clears throat> four udder in rear arch. But carrying on. Um, so here we're talking about rear udder height. Now it's to the untrained eye, it can like take a minute to see this. So in rear udder, what we really want is an udder that is as high up into the vulva as possible. We want as little fleshing. So you see how much flesh there is here and then a little bit less and then almost none. That's what we're really shooting for when we're breeding dairy goats. We want like almost no space between the bottom of her vulva and the top of the udder. So in here, we're going for a higher point range, looking for about 40 to 45. And that's when you see it, it's kind of jaw dropping. It looks pretty, looks pretty great. Um, so um, looking at the arch, that has to do with the shape here. So this is almost looks like an upside down heart. Um, and you see it's kind of a triangular shape up here. So that's a five. There's almost really no arching. That's kind of a point, right? Not really an arch. Here's like a nice medium sized arch. And then this is like a full on U, like big, big arch. So um, again, we're looking for a little bit higher arch score here. About 32 to 40 would be a great score for an arch. The medial suspensory ligament is very important. It is what holds up your doe's udder for its lifetime. Um, if a doe does not have a good MSL, she's not staying here in my herd. Um, I actually quite like this This 25 doe has a pretty nice little uh, uh, medial suspensory ligament there. You can see this is one is just completely absent of any. Um, I've had a couple animals like that in the past and you can just tell. That udder is um, floppy and it's not gonna stand up for very long. It's gonna fall apart in their life with use. Um, and this is like a super tight one. Um, so in this area, we're looking for about 28 to 32 points, um, but I would probably be happy with a 25 too, but I love a nice, me a nice tight medial suspensory ligament. Okay, looking at udder depth. So, some people get fooled thinking a big udder is better. Well, a big udder is only better if it's actually 
well attached uh, with uh, good teat placement. Big, mm, big is good, but only if it's only if it's done correctly. Um, so this dough, you could see that this, if you had a dough with this type of udder, yeah, she's got a lot of capacity, but it's hanging past her hocks, which we do not want. Um, and you can see it's lacking in that four udder, which was actually right over here. If it was more up, her four udder was more up here, that would have brought her whole udder up and she would be, have a better, better udder, but she doesn't, <laughs> not in this picture. So we are not looking for five. So 45 is actually where the udder is so, highly attached um, up here and then up here that we actually don't have much milk in there. Um, I have a dough like this who actually has more capacity than it looks like. She doesn't look like she has a lot because um, her udder is so snug up on her body, but um, she does actually carry a fair amount of milk in there anyway. So we're looking for something like this. We are looking for an udder with um, a third of it in front of her leg, third of it behind her leg, and a third of it protruding out behind her leg. Looking for an udder depth of about 22 to 27. So right around that picture in the middle. Um, in teat placement, um, I see way too much of this. Teats outside on the leg. That's not healthy for your animal. It's really not fun to milk. Um, now this is kind of nutty on a whole nether spectrum. I've never seen it. If it really exists, I'd love to see a picture of that. Um, <laughs> but um, what we're really looking for in teat placement is a teat that's centered right in the middle of each cleft of the udder. Um, that would be a placement of 25. We consider that perfect teat placement. We are looking for the score of about 25 to 30. We don't want that and that's nuts. So we're shooting for about 25 in our teat placement. So teat diameter, um, this one's different. Um, so, and I have to say your personal preference is gonna come into play here. Um, if you have hand issues, um, muscle issues, uh, and you just need big milkable teats, guess what? You're probably gonna want something like that in your herd because maybe you have arthritis and this is a goat you can easily milk. Um, but uh, ideally what we're shooting for here is about 18 to 28. So we're actually not looking for something as small as that, not something huge, though definitely there's a place for that. Um, we're looking for something that has um, a decent width to it, um, not too big, not too small. So in the rear udder side view, this gets kind of into what I was talking about with the udder depth as well. Um, this sheet they have not updated. It is now scored on a scale of zero to four. Zero means you cannot um, view the udder because it is hidden behind the leg. It is, there's like no rear udder there. Um, and four is um, extremely rounded, bulging or protruding beyond the vulva, looking more like that. So let's compare um, those scores uh, to an actual live animal that's not hand-drawn. <laughs> Um, so this doe here, she scored a 34 in dairiness. So let's compare that body style here that we're looking for in dairiness. So she scored a 34. We're looking for about a 33 to a 38 in a good animal. So yay, we're right, right on the money. You can see that she has this nice depth here. She does have nice um, dairy ribbing. She does have a nice long lean neck it's not fat and chunky like that um she's not built like a square we have a nice shape coming on here um so that animal um, is a really good demonstration of what dairiness should look like um in one of our dairy goats so moving on to rump angle um as i mentioned this is a tough area particularly the nigerian breed um this doe's got pretty much one of the best rump angles in our herd. Um, so in here, we're looking for a score of about um, 30 to 35. So here you, in this, remember, this is a really steep rump. We don't want that. And that's kind of the super extreme. We're looking for, um, for a more level rump. So a score of 30 to 35. This doe scored a 30, and that seems to be about straight on with um, with those pictures and those scores. She's not as steep as the 25, and she's also not as elevated as that. Um, so that's a 30 and rump angle. Um, and then let's look at four udder attachment. So 
So remember in four udder attachment, we're looking for something smoothly attached um, to the belly, lacking, you know, no, no pocket here. And, um, you know, um, the nice smooth um, blending here into the body. So we're looking here for a score of 35 to 42. Um, this doe uh, scored a 35. Let me see if I can focus on that better. You can see her four udder. There's absolutely uh, no no pocket there. Um, this I don't feel like this picture actually does her justice. It's even it's even better than it looks in the picture. But she's at a 35. She's only two years old. I'm really curious to see how um, this doe continues to improve. I think she will get even better. But that's very nice. Very nice. So here is that same doe in rear udder view. Um, so in this. Uh, this category in rear utter height, um, this doe scored a 37. So remember here, we're looking for about 40 to 45, which is way, way, way up there towards the vulva. I think this doe is actually quite good. There's the bottom of her vulva and there's the top of her udder. There's not much fleshing there, but there's a hair of room for improvement. Um, now, if we're looking at her rear utter arch, um, this doe scored a um, 29. And we are looking for something a bit more. We're looking for more of a 32 to 40. And I feel like that's fair. If you see the shape here, we're not the full sort of heart there, um, but we aren't to that big, huge U shape yet. So um, that doe is a 29 in arch. Um, and then looking at the medial suspensory ligament, that's the little rubber band that holds up the udder. Um, this doe scored a 30 in medial and we're looking for about a 28 to 32. So this is actually quite nice. You can see how nice and snug that is, but also it's not insane. Um, you can even see her teats there have very nice teat placement towards the center um, cleft of each half of the udder. So let's look at another doe that has a lot of similarities, but you can start to see these minor, minor differences. Okay, so this doe scored a 28 in dairiness um, when we were looking for something more like 33 to 38. You can see she's got um, a little bit um, thicker of a neck. She's in general just a bit meatier, more of a goat. Um, she does have um, a ton of body capacity and depth. She is a nice doe, um, but she's maybe not quite as elegant and dairy um, as we might like to see. Um, in rump angle, you can see pretty clearly here she has m more steepness to her rump. You can, um, she received a 24 in rump angle, and you can see that she almost perfectly matches that picture at 25. Um, so that's a, that's a fair score. So she's got a um, rump that's on the steeper side. However, um, this doe has really nice extension of fore udder. Um, it comes pretty far forward onto her belly and has no pocket whatsoever. Um, I love how well attached this doe's udder is in the fore and um, her kids have that same fore udder. So here is that same doe in rear view. She's black, so she doesn't photograph very well. I apologize for that. She got a 33 in rear arch. Um, or excuse me, a 33 in rear udder height. You can see she has more fleshing for sure between her vulva and the top of her udder. Um, in arch, this doe got a 28. We're looking for more like a 32 to 40. Hers is pretty good, um, but it could be, could be better. And in medial suspensory ligament, she got a 26. Um, we're looking for more like 28 to 32. I would like to see more definition right there. I would like that tight to be a little tighter and up there, um, which would cause those teats to look even a little bit better. Um, so um, a nice doe, um, but those are things that could be improved and make her just that much better. Now the second half of our linear appraisal score sheet, um, or report as it's called, um, is scored in uh, these categories. So our structural categories are P for poor, F for fair, um, now acceptable is now G for good. Um, so that needs to be updated on their paperwork. Um, plus means good plus, V is very good, and E is excellent. Um, so those are somewhat more straightforward, I feel, than the, um, the linear traits, which are a bit confusing. But let's maybe look at a couple examples of those. So unfortunately, ADGA does not give us um, 
a nice little set of drawings for those structural traits. Um, but I can tell you how um, a couple of my animals scored. So this doe that we've been looking at, she received a plus in head. The um, appraiser said they wanted to see more width all the way through the muzzle. She has a nice big width on the top of her head, but it gets rather narrow um, at the muzzle and nostrils. Um, in shoulders, this doe got a V for very good. Um, shoulders are really tricky and really complicated and a side profile picture is not going to tell you everything about how shoulders are put together, um, unfortunately. Uh, in front legs, this doe got an E for excellent. Um, in rear legs, this doe also got an E for excellent. Now in feet, she just got a G for, you know, good. Um, this is one of those areas where I learned that the, I have been trimming these this doe's feet incorrectly. And she does have some widespread toes, particularly in the front, though often that goes along with being very dairy. This doe received a V in back. Um, the, this doe has the unfortunate disadvantage of having a big dark splotch right in a really unfortunate place on her back, but her back could be stronger. I would like to see it be more level. Um, she received a V in rump and um, in her final score, in general appearance, so that means her overall put togetherness, she received a very good, dairiness, excellent, body, very good, and mammary E for excellent um, and a final score of 90. So now the question is when I'm thinking about who am I going to breed this buck to this year, um, she's got a lot going right. I don't want to pick a buck that's going to take away from what she's got going on right, but the areas I definitely need to see improvement on in her um, are in her back and maybe someone with a wider muzzle. Um, and typically a wider muzzle is gonna lead to a wider body throughout, depending on who you talk to. Perhaps also looking for someone who, is, a buck who also excels in feet um, to help um, improve those feet in future generations. Now looking at this other doe's structural traits, and I apologize, uh, we are well over 100 right now and our fans are working overtime. It's kind of loud here but bear with me. So this doe got an E in head. This doe has a really wide um, muzzle, very big nostrils. Um, she does put that onto her kids. Uh, love it, looks fabulous. Um, so she has an excellent in head. Uh, in her shoulder assembly, this is our only doe who also has an E in shoulder assembly. That, those are great qualities I hope to continue to hold on to and pass on to her kids. This doe has a plus in front legs, a V in rear legs. I like that her rear legs look very much kind of like that drawing with that in curving at the thigh, straight down from the hop to the pastern. Um, she has a good in feet. Um, this doe actually had really poorly maintained feet when she came to me, which are um, have been somewhat problematic and I've gotten them back as best I could, um, but I feel like that score is very deserved. They're not perfect. Um, she would be one where I'm definitely gonna wanna use a buck who has strong feet. Um, she has a plus in back and a plus in rump um, with a final score of V in general appearance, an E for excellent dairiness, an E for excellent in body, and a V in very good for mammary system for a final score of 88. Um, I like this doe a lot. Um, she has a lot of great stuff in there, throws really nice kids but I am going to be looking for a buck um, who can hopefully improve her rump, um, one who has um, you know, some better, better feet on him, um, somebody maybe who can help improve her medial suspensory ligament without taking away from that fabulous fore udder she has. Um, but I love this uh, doe's depth of body. She's, she's a really, really strong doe, she throws really nice kids. So um, we'll be choosy, picky about choosing her her match this year. So I hope you learned a lot from this tutorial. There's always more to learn, but I hope this gives you a good jumping off point for evaluating your scores and looking at how you can improve your breedings going into the future. I also wanna take a moment to remind you that these tutorials are brought to you by our amazing Patreons, who are people just like you, who love goats and just wanna get better at their, what they're doing and learn more. Please also do share our tutorials with anyone you think would benefit from this information.